Hello YouTube, I'm Pedro from the Wicked Cat team. On the last couple of videos, I show you guys how to use the standard shader of Unity 5. If you remember the first video regarding the shader, you probably remember that you have two approaches when using it. The metallic approach, which we have been using in the video tutorials, and the specular approach. Today, I will give you guys a quick lesson where I explain the main differences between the two approaches. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like and, if you want more Unity 5 tutorials, remember to subscribe to our channel. Ok guys, so now that we have our materials created using the standard shader with metallic approach, it's now time to take a look at the specular approach and see the difference between the two methods. So, to change the shader of our materials from metallic to specular, we select a material, in this case we selected the Loadmaster Cargo Bag, so we will affect the back area of our truck. And now, we select it from the um, project view, and we actually go to the inspector, and on shader, here on top, we have standard, we select standard specular setup. This will automatically change the shader from Metallica, the metallic approach to the specular approach. Now, as you guys can see, once I do that, Unity will keep all the maps I already have in my in the in the standard shader metallic approach, except for the metallic one that it was replaced by a specular parameter as you guys can see here. So while the metallic approach exposes a metallic value that states whatever the material is metallic or not, the specular approach uses a tra more traditional method. So like I said, as you guys can see, the metallic field was replaced by a specular field. Here you can control the, the color and strength of specular reflections in the material. Using this map makes it possible to have specular reflections of a different color than the fuse reflection. Now keep in mind that generally it's possible to achieve good results using either method. Choosing one or another depends on your personal preference and what suits best your workflow. So. Coming, coming back to the specular, specular effects are essentially the direction, the, the, the direct reflections of light sources in your scene, which typ typically show up as bright highlights or shines in the surface of the objects. So once you activate the specular mode, the RGB color in the specular parameter that you can select right here. Uh, controls the, the clarity of the specular effect. If you use lo, lo, now here you can control the color as you guys can see right so like with the default value and here in smoothness you can control the the how the the reflections appear so low smoothness value reflections will appear blurred and fuzzed as you guys can see. If you set high smoothness value, specular reflections will be clear. Right? So let's just keep it in the middle. So just like the metallic approach, you can either use a color or a value and a value, or you can simply use a map. So if you decide to use a map, a specular map, to select one, you just click here and you search for the map. I actually don't have one, so I'm not going to use one here. But uh, if you decide to have a map, for example, this is not a specular map, but let's use it. You will notice that the, the color and the, the smoothness value will disappear. This happens because um, Unity will get all the information from this texture. 
So the idea here is that specular maps are textures that use uh, RGB channels, the, the values of the RGB channels to control the specular values, while the, while the alpha channel of the same texture is used to control the smoothness levels of the material. Okay, so let me just set this to none and now you have the color and the smoothness spec and I want this to be the standard one thing that is really cool about unity is that you can actually change from the two standards to the two shaders for example I'm in the specular setup and I'm going back to standard and unity will automatically uh, reload the metallic map that you previously had on that material which is uh, quite useful so okay guys these are the basic differences between the metallic and the specular approach again keep in mind that you can get good results with both methods it's just a matter of personal preference I personally prefer the metallic approach since the metallic maps are quite easy to create just like I show you guys on the previous videos so I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson, until the next video, have a nice day.